Fellow tennis nerds, I'm here with a guy you already know, Nikki Run, uh, who we do the coaching app, we do coaching videos, we've done a lot of things together. He customizes rackets for the pros, strings for Novak and all that jazz, you might know that already. Uh, but you might not know that he's been at Bad Homburg, which is a WTA yeah. level tournament, a high level. Yeah, Igor Svontek. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and you were there for how long? Uh, so I was there for 10 days. So we start by setting up on Thursday and then obviously um, first day of practice is Friday mainly and then uh, qualifying Saturday, split main draw Monday and until Saturday final because obviously of Wimbledon starting Saturday final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to um, yeah, think of that always. And how, how, what's the atmosphere when you in Bad Homburg? I've never been to that tournament. I've been to Stuttgart and the ATPs, but mm -hmm. not the... Uh, it's really nice. I mean, it's set up in a way of like a, like the idea is, it's called a boutique tennis experience. So everything is, it's, it's a small tournament, but a big tournament in terms of obviously players and stuff. So mm. it's, you're very close to the court. Uh, everything is very nice. They had, you know, big concerts on, nice food. Everything is like boutique style. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's in a beautiful park, so it's, uh, it's quite different from other tournaments I've been to, which is which is nice. It makes it cool. Also with the grass experience, Wimbledon time, the weather's nice, so yeah. it's good. And uh, but you you go every year to this one at least, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's been on for three years now, and I've been every year, so it's uh, it's a fun tournament. Um, I'm there with the Yonex String Service, so it's Yonex that have the string service and uh, they invite me so far every year which is good and uh, we're a nice little team because it's uh, we're not super busy with string loads of rackets uh, so we're a small team but it goes well smooth and um, yeah it's all in all the time passes pretty fast yeah the level of, of, of I mean, the team size difference in a grand slam yeah. and uh, a ATP 250 or WTA 250 it, it looks so much more uh, I would say like not tranquil but it looks like it's a nicer vibe yeah in a smaller tournament like yeah, you have a definitely. bit more time fewer rackets like how many rackets did you string during this uh, i think well in, all week? in all i think i did 84 rackets in the 10 days i mean obviously thursday setup didn't really string any maybe two and then friday saturday started to do more sunday monday tuesday was busy and then obviously it starts to deal down obviously each day the draw gets half so it goes down quick um but also i think taking into account a grass court tournament people players aren't stringing as much but the cool thing to see was that this year we were up by 50 rackets from last year so oh, wow. which means obviously the players the girls are stringing a lot more rackets players are think i think they're each year it seems like they're getting a little bit more focused or taking the like the stringing a little bit more seriously yeah so instead of just giving one they give two three four rackets so why do you think players are stringing more rackets i think they with like the development of the sport in in everything whether it's you know their training fitness food everything they're starting to all players across sort of all levels are taking like each little thing more and more sort of detailed and yeah. uh, it's just another another part of the game that they have to sort of focus in more mm. on so i think the lower ranked players the top ranked players have always been giving in you know plenty of rackets but now you see the ones that are maybe 50 60 70 in the world they're also starting to give three four rackets and because they I think are starting to appreciate the difference that it can actually make to them in a game yeah yeah I think people are more and more aware of everything I mean that could be food physical preparation gear uh, yeah. you know and the stringing and the different tensions and trying out like exactly depending on conditions what do you see when you string like ATP versus WTA like what are the differences in in maybe types of rackets mm -hmm. and tensions and strings yeah so I mean the main difference is on the WTA tour you see a lot bigger head sizes uh, so the average is a hundred yeah there's a lot more hundred square inch uh, racket heads and they're nearly nearly all 1619 so you don't get that many small heads tight string patterns as you do on the guys um, I guess because that you obviously get more power a little bit more spin with with that kind of setup um, so you also tend to you don't get the same deviation in tensions as you do on guys I think also because of that so players on the guys tour might be using a small head dense string pattern but then using a very low tension mm. uh, I would say the on the women's side the uh, tension pro and the profile of the frames are a lot similar ah, yeah. you don't get quite a big disparity of sort of types of rackets and set and setups I mean you do obviously you always get your anomalies but in general yeah yeah there's not many 95 square inch rackets on the wta i, I don't even no. know one i can think of i mean there's a few that maybe plays the the h tour or something like like Ayla tomianovic maybe yeah there's uh i mean there's a couple of I'm trying to think maybe the pro stuff yeah the 97 at least that's yeah around, the 97 yeah. you have the um, maybe some 92, 95s yeah some 95 the pro stuff like the old one that um 
Uh, Kvitsa was using yeah. that kind of stuff. Actually, no, they're bigger heads, I think, actually. They're not, it's not a 95, it's the No, no, I think it's a 97, kind of. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, so the, maybe the lowest you go. Yeah, almost. so there's not, you don't get that, yeah, dense string pan, which yeah. makes the string job a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, weaving a little bit faster, uh, a little bit less stressful on the, on the fingers. So that's, it's a nice, yeah. Yeah, and everybody nice who strings, then they know that, like, and, and if you want to learn how to string, Nikki has a course, so you can check that out. Yeah. I'll put the link in the description, but I string for my own rackets and like if you have a hundred square inch 16, 19, you're like, oh, nice, yeah. you know, and then a 95, 18, 20, it's going to be a little bit more time exactly. consuming and a little bit more annoying. Overall, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, it definitely does, does make a difference. And then weirdly this year, the rackets that I strung the most uh, was head speeds. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Don't know why. Just it, any player that had their head speed. I seem to to get so it was like uh, Andrescu. She plays. She plays 1820 actually. Head speed. Yeah, yeah the, the pro. Um, yeah. Samsonova. Um, I have to think of some more names, but I think there was at least six players I was stringing that was all head speeds. Oh so, wow! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a popular model. Like yeah. I think it's it's. Um, what's this? Oh, I have three in my. You have a tree in your head. <laughs> Maybe this will look it's interesting. It's on your in shirt as well. While I, I clean myself from tree. Um, I, it makes sense that like okay they want more power. Usually you see yeah. that lower swing weights. Yep. Um, when it comes to strings, like, do you see more natural gut or and hybrids, or is it more or less like full polyester a lot? Full polys, to be honest. Yeah. We saw, th I see, we, I see, or saw at least more thinner gauges. Yeah, okay. Um, so a fair bit of Timo as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, Luxalon Timo. Um, That's a rare one. Generally. Yeah, rare, yeah. nice string, one, two, two. But there was also um, players playing like 1.2 links, tour. Mm. Um, and even I think Polytor Pro 120. So there's players, the girls are using the 120 because obviously you do get more feedback, uh, strings a little bit more lively, and if they're not breaking, then it's then it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and they restring like the guys every day, I guess, yeah, for every, much, for every yeah, practice. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, like always, some players are a little bit more picky when the rackets are strung, other players don't mind as long as it's the same every day yeah. or, you know, so. But all in all, yeah, this year we had no real, no real issues. We were a good team, so it was myself, um, Kai Plitt, who's probably, I mean, in my opinion, one of the best stringers in the world. And he's been around for years stringing yeah. all Grand Slams. Uh, and then Martin Mann as well, who's uh, also now stringing for Grand Slams and big tournaments. So like the three of us, I was probably the least experienced in terms of like tournament stringing, because mm. uh, these guys are like a seasoned tournament yeah, stringers. Yeah, they travel quite a lot and, then. Yeah. And um, whereas I, I you know, I'm not stringing many tournaments a year. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was a strong team. It was a nice team meant, you know, that there was never really a point where there was any sort of stress in terms of like the amount of rackets. Cause yeah. you know, we could all string more than enough rackets. I think the most I strung in one day was 27. That's um, a lot though, 27 rackets. Yeah, 20, yeah, 25 or 27, I can't remember. It was on the, it would have been on the Monday. Yeah. It was a busy day, but like between, I mean, from, I think we got there at half eight and left at maybe nine. Yeah. And so it's, when you work it out, it's not that bad. And also, like I said, the rackets were easy. So like, I would say my average speed was sort of three and a half frame, three and a half to four rackets an hour. That's, that's um, good, yeah. That's... Because of like the slightly easier setup, everything going a little bit faster. Um, and one of the nice things as well with this tournament is that the stringing service is in the like public area. So it's in the village. Yeah, so yeah. where people are getting food, where there's a speed gun where there's the champagne bar where so people are coming by we were also stringing for um rec players rec yeah exactly yeah, yeah. recreational players and so it meant there was something happening you know we weren't in like some little closet in the back of the yeah. tennis club somewhere you know which we were was like nice. a tent like a little bit remote you exactly know? Yeah, yeah. so we were out you know people were passing by things were happening uh things people were coming up talking to us asking us questions we yeah. had uh, and it was nice, you know, the players seemed to enjoy it as well. Um, so it was on their way from, they could either walk to the hotel, which was about a two minute walk, um, if they didn't want to take a car. So mm. it, was, it was convenient for them as well. Yeah. And we, yeah, it just made, makes it a little bit more exciting because sometimes you see the string rooms and they're hidden away, barely any windows. They're lucky if they have air conditioning. So the conditions were, they were, they were nice, they were good. I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, because even in like Mallorca where I went, the stringing service was like, at least by the window, they could actually see uh, one of the courts okay. from there. And it's like nice and bright, yes. it's a nice room, you exactly. know, you have refreshments and stuff. But sometimes you've seen the stringers being put like in some, you know, yeah. basement area. Exactly. Uh, maybe yeah, I yeah. heard that from the Australian Open, like where, where you don't see much of, no. of the action or even daylight. No, you know, exactly. Sometimes, and, you, know. you know, and I think what for me, one of the things that I'm most sort of passionate about in terms of like 
stringing is trying to improve yeah. the conditions for stringers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, improve their pay, improve the conditions, improve the respect they get, improve the thanks they get. Because, yeah. you know, it's like a typical thing after a player wins a tournament. They thank everybody, but nobody ever thanks the stringers. You know, nobody says thanks to the stringers, you know, and, and we're like, stringers are one of the, uh, like the foundations of the tournament. Like mm. if, if, I don't know, we don't turn up in the morning, there's no matches. You know, you can play matches without ball boys, you can play matches without line judges. But you, I mean, if the stringers don't turn up, you've got no rackets, you're not, like nobody's playing. No. So they don't quite get the, you know, the respect or the sort of the recognition that they deserve, which I think for a lot of the guys that string, they, they love what they do and they're passionate about it. But just having a little bit more sort of gratefulness from the players, like it means a lot. And also, even just when players come to the stringing booth or the stringing tent, pick up their racket, say thanks. Like, the, I know the stringers really appreciate it. Yeah. It, you know, it just, um, yeah, like, you know, if they're hidden away for hours and hours, it's nice that, you know, that, that, that someone is starting to show a little bit of appreci appreciation. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that's a theme that resonates throughout. I've talked to a lot of stringers on the podcast before. Me and Nicky have talked before, but also uh, Paul Skip and a bunch of other guys. Also Martin Mann, as you mentioned. And I think they all feel a little bit sometimes forgotten, you know, it's like mm -hmm. some players give them credit and, yeah. and stop. And, you know, it can happen at the Labour Cup or it can happen at, yeah. at a slam. But sometimes it's a little bit, uh, you know, just string my racket and there's yeah. not much in terms of thanks. It's just no. like, here you go. And uh, it can be a little bit dead because it's, it's imp the stringing service is important. Like you said, there's yeah. no tournament and also a bad string job and a great string job. There are two different rackets. Yeah, exactly. Like players, you don't want to, you don't want to piss off the stringers before you're playing a tournament. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? I mean, not that play the stringers are going to do a bad job, but you know, like it's the effort that you know, like everything's done by hand. So yeah. like if, you know, yeah. if the, Regardless, like if you know, if you're, you wouldn't piss off your car mechanic, no, like exactly. hey, you know, and and exactly. so he does something, yeah, exactly, not perfect. Let's say exactly. he's a little bit more lazy with you. Yeah, or... and um, I just think that you know the players, or like a lot, for a long time now, like I said, it's getting better. But for a long time, players, yeah, were just kind of, uh, here's my racket. I won it for like ten minutes ago, mm. you know, and then it's like, well, there's a lot of work, you know, like yeah, like it's a process. It's a process. Like I think coaches and players can get could get better at just their communication with yep. stringers you know like for example we had like i had a player that i knew that she wanted a racket strung on the day mm. which is not a problem if we know about it you know mm. but instead of it just turning up last minute oh he go to his two rackets uh, the coach said to me hey look uh, i have two rackets for you but i'm going to give them to you later or i'm going to give them to you now but i'll let you know when you can string them ideally as close to whatever time they need them as you can then that's not a problem we'll always like the string service always do as best we can to like accommodate the players the coaches whatever the request is as long as it's like a little bit sort of respectful whereas yeah. a lot of uh, in the past I've ex you know experienced guys players coaches just kind of like demanding stuff and then it you know it's that's not cool no would you want to string more tournaments in the future um, I think a few you know and but I'm I guess maybe fortunate that I I would only want to do it if I like the team, if you know, like it's a tournament that I want to string at. Yeah. Um, so I don't, for example, personally, it's not a goal of mine to string at a Grand Slam. It's, that's heavy. It's, um. Yeah, it's heavy. That's mm. not for me. You know, my fingers are not made for that. Like yeah. even even this tournament, I could feel after when I got to Wednesday, my fingers were sore. You know, like I'm used to stringing some a uh, couple rackets a day, a week even. Yeah. Let alone like you know that kind of quantity consistently. Yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah like and boom, it's, boom, ju yeah. it's just not it's not for me. No. Uh, so I like I really enjoyed that kind of week. I'm also to be honest, I would really, I'm I like to work on the front desk um, because it's like for me I feel like it's the position where I also I know maybe a lot of the coaches or players and stuff mm. that I can also try and help with the stuff that I was talking about and bridging the gap between the stringers and the players a little bit, you yeah. know, like, so even in Bad Homburg, there's a lot of the guys that I used to play with, they're now coaching various players, yeah. you know, and so you can speak to them a little bit and be like, if they're, let's say if they do something that, because obviously some guys, they don't realize that they, uh, you know, uh, dropping rackets too late or, mm. you know, because they maybe not thought about it, yeah. which is fine. And then, you know, if I don't mind to be in a position where I'm like, hey, do you mind just tomorrow or next time, just bring us the, let us know mm. or whatever it might be. And then nine times out of 10, they're like, oh yeah, sorry, no, yeah, sorry, we'll do that, no problem. And then that for me is a way that I can like impact the sort of the stringing service for, for people a lot more than just stringing rackets at a tournament. So like front desk service is something I like, like I enjoy, I you know, it's, yeah. Something that yeah, it would suit you well because you also have from player experience, from coaching experience and from stringing. So you have the kind of three, yeah, exactly. three different perspectives, which I yeah. think is, is relatively rare in the yeah. stringing yeah, scene. Yeah, I think I so, say, I think yeah. so. And I think being able to sort of help 
you know, everyone, because obviously the stringing service is there to help the players, but I would like to help the stringing service and the tournament. And so like it all kind of goes a little bit together. Yeah. Uh, so I think it would be, yeah. So that would be something I would like to do more of. But it sounds, sounds, it sounds like a fun uh, thing if it's not too big. Like I'm, I'm the same, like I, that, that sounds like in my head also as a kind mm -hmm. of a fun atmosphere. But when you go to a Grand Slam and you see Wimbledon stringing room, I don't get like, ooh, that would be no. nice, you know, because it looks a little bit more sweatshoppy. No offense to anyone, nope. but it's like that's just how it how it feels, yeah. you know, and yeah, it might like not long be. Long corridor, but it's, white lights, yeah. you know, there's uh, and loads of rackets like Grand Slam, rackets, like there should yeah. be loads which, of rackets. Which, okay, but again, I think that stringing services, you know, one of the things that I personally don't, I it is the way it is, but I don't agree with that stringing services have to pay to be part of the tournament. It's just something that I don't think should happen. Oh, they, they, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so string service have to pay to be part of the tournament, which means that they can't... So the brand has to kind of pay. The brand has like, to pay, yeah, yeah. and therefore they can't pay the stringers, or they, have to, they want to pay the stringers less, or they want to have a stringer less. So mm. like each tournament, nearly every tournament I hear of, they're always a stringer too little. Yeah. They're always a stringer that too little. That seems less. to be the thing, yeah. And it's because they either, you know, and the options are either charge the players more, but then the players get annoyed. Mm. Fair enough, I guess, if they're stringing, you know. How like, much is a racket for a player, by the way? Uh, so in Bad Humbo, we were charging 22 euros 50 and 20 euros were for the string service. And then 250 was for a charity, for a charity oh, nice. from the from the area uh, together with Yonex that um, they've been helping with for a long time. It's for, um, it was actually like a local player. He set up a cancer, uh, uh, cancer foundation. And um, yeah, so two euros 50 went to, and then all the money from the, uh, recreational players that we strung went directly to the charity as well. So we raised nearly 2,000 euros in the in week. So that was, well, was nice. nice. So you combine yeah. charity and like uh, an event like that. Yeah, exactly. Know. It was nice, you know, and also an extra 250 on a racket for, you know. It, yeah, it, it, everyone it pretty much can afford that, especially. At that, level, yeah, yeah, at that but, level, yeah. But, you know, so any, but yeah, I think the restring is between 20 and 30 euros, mm. roughly. Yeah, yeah I've, heard, I've heard about 25, um, 35 yeah. sometimes, you know, depending on. And it's, you know, and, play, and stringers are getting paid like a day rate. They're never mm. getting, or very, only in the old school days they were getting paid per racket, but mm. that doesn't work out well because then stringers are trying to string way too many rackets. Yeah, yeah. they you know, will like, do it, yeah. If you're getting paid per, <clears throat> per racket, then you're like just asking for, you know, some guys would be asking for more and more rackets, yeah. you know, to, which isn't good for then the quality will start to dip. So getting, they, nine times out of 10, you get paid a day rate. And um, it just seems that there's always a stringer too less. And that, you know, Dimension can, in the end, it will hurt the quality of the string service. It'll also, you know, tire out the stringers too much. Um, and so therefore, like, I don't think that a string service should have to pay to be part of the tournament because they are, f they're not a sponsor. They're a foundational part of the tournament. Mm. You know, like, for example. Yeah, without them, I mean, like, there's no tournament. So, there's so no to like, yeah, in exactly. every tournament has a stringing service. You have That's to why have I thought it was like a kind of an yeah. integral part of like, you know, when you're setting up the tournament, you're like, but obviously since you always have different brands running it, yeah, and yeah. it's not just like, yeah. you know, from different know. areas, it's yeah. always like, yeah, it's but Yonix, Wilson, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think that, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I think they're trying to get the ball sponsor includes the stringing service. Okay. You know, because obviously Could I understand be, yeah. you, you paid to be the ball sponsor, but that means yeah. that you also get the stringing service. All right. And yeah. that hopefully can alleviate some of the budget issues for the stringing service, if they go together. And then, um, ew, what was I gonna say? Do, 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 stringing service, paying. If you're, their sponsor is from both the ball and- uh, Ah, so. no, that, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, for example, uh, the physios, the doctors of the tournament, they're supplied by the tournament. It, that makes sense. You know, it's um, like, if you, you know, like if, you, if you have a physio clinic somewhere, you're not paying, a tournament to be part of the part of the tournament physio service yeah. like they they are getting the physio service in yeah and you, know. you could argue they're i mean they do an amazing job the players need them it's not that they're not important but they're at least as important as the stringers and the stringers have to technically pay to be there yeah uh so i think that's something that needs to change i would like to see change um and again that comes with the awareness you know there might even even, I mean, if you think about it, the idea that the stringers should even have, uh, the players even should have to pay is a, like a questionable thing, really. When you think of the size of a tournament, mm. the prize money that goes into it, you know, even like up to a certain level, why do the players actually have to pay? They don't pay for water, they don't pay for towels. No car service, physio, nothing, right? Car service. Why Very, are all the, not hotels either. No yeah. hotels. 
So why are all these things included and not the stringing service? Is it because you can? Yeah, it's true. Huh? Because you can eat as much as you want, pretty much. But well, you have some, you know, budget. Yeah, yeah but, but you have food covered. Uh, and you could have an include, yeah. like you could say, hey, you have, uh, you know, X rackets a day. You know, at least some limitations so people oh, yeah, don't go yeah, crazy. Yeah, obviously, you know, a bit like the food, I guess. Yeah. So you know, so on the food, a lot of times at tournaments you get whatever, uh, fifty euros yeah, 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 per day, yeah, or whatever yeah. it, you it go might to the be. Canteen and some you know, and then yeah. you get your X quota. For every every day you're in the tournament, you get four restrings, three restrings, or two free restrings, yeah, or easy. whatever it might be. It makes sense, I think. Yeah. Um, and that way, first of all, the tournament will know how many rackets players are going to string, roughly, a mm. lot more accurately, because then players are probably going to use their re free restrings, mm. more or less. And you know the workload, you can prepare for it, you can uh, know how many strings you need. Yeah. Everything is going to be a lot better. And yeah, and then the players, I mean, like, like I said, they don't shouldn't really have to pay. Yeah. And at the end, ah, of they would be happy with that for sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. And it's also I, I feel like sometimes in tennis or like the way that the tours are structured now, it's like feels like there's some that take a lot of big chunk of the money. Mm -hmm. Players on on lower levels get very very little. Mm -hmm. The prize money are still similar to like to what it was like 10, 15 years ago. Although they increased yeah. a bit on the futures, but you know like, a yeah, bit marginally, yeah, yeah. marginally. So I think there's there's like a you know completely disproportion of the money. Yeah. flow right exactly. where, where it needs to kind of balance out a bit more to make tennis a more viable sport you know mm -hmm. i know the big companies sponsors whatever or the tournaments they want more and more money they you know they get the sponsors in blah blah yeah, blah yeah, yeah, but yeah. it it's it needs also some balance because otherwise the whole funnel doesn't really work like the whole no, system of tennis. no exactly and that's what i mean so for example like if you look at a stringing service say you're doing um 300 rackets in a week which is roughly what we did i, uh, I can't remember the 324 something like that i think 318 was the total we did at 22 euros 50 or let's say just say 20 euros mm. um on 300 that's seven thousand uh, yeah 155 yeah so around seven thousand mm. and then i don't know how i have no idea how much you're going to pay like for that service but i know roughly it's around anywhere between one to two thousand a week at a, at a tournament at that level, mm. a firm like, oh, probably a 250 would be, there, be a thousand yeah. euros, let's say, roughly. And it, well, so that's kind of the the rent of the tent. <laughs> Basically, yeah. In, I think actually way. it could like even be way more. Yeah, it, it could yeah. even be a bit more because there's, yeah, the te uh, anyway, whatever, the f there's a fee of, yeah. let's say, 1500, you know, so then suddenly there's not, I mean, it's not a massive outgoing for a tournament with a big prize money fund, but no. it's also not a lot of profit to then you have to, no. Like the service has to make money, and then you have to pay your stringers. Yeah. You know, and you're left with five five thousand euros barely. Yeah. You know, to pay at least three stringers and a front desk manager, so four four people. And you're like, it's you know, it's the, and, the finances and, become wonky, right? Yeah, so then, the then that's exactly, why you cut the out the stringer. Right? Exactly, and so therefore you get away, get rid of the stringer. So then we have just two stringers and a front desk manager or a helper or whatever. Mm. And then you know, if you're busy and you then need to stencil, you need to cut strings out, you do, and then it becomes chaos. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. you make mistakes. And, and the stuff. service is, is then less good, obviously, exactly. for the players. And then you're working stuff, longer yeah. hours, and then everything becomes worse. Yeah. You know, and it's for let's say for a f total of seven to eight thousand euros for the whole tournament. It's not such a big impact on the no. tournament, you know. Like at, at a tournament, if I can't see a reason why that can't be included in the fee that they pay. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it it's be below 10k, right? So it's it like exactly. it, it, that then seems very strange because if you you look yeah. at it from like what a sponsor pays to be a part, like let's say if you're a title sponsor, you have to pay, you know, it could be up to like a million or more yeah. euro, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's like that's a lot of money, right? That's but, a lot of money. Yeah. And so you know, to say okay, for a 250 to a 500, you have to pay 10, 10, 10 thousand. Yeah. It's not a, I don't, th I don't think it's such a big impact. And I think it can benefit the players, can benefit the tournament, can definitely benefit the stringers. It means you can always have one extra stringer. Uh, yeah. Things will always be better, better organized. You know what you're dealing with. Um, and so all in all, I think the service is going to like get better. Yeah, uh, I agree. I so agree. yeah, so that's one of the things that I would like to, I don't know exactly how, but I would like to see changed. Some reform. I think, I think tennis needs these discussions because there's, there's a lot of things like in tennis. I mean, the, the thing that I get on always on the podcast is like people who maybe play pro, uh, the, the system of like, you know, you're, you're trying to make it on the futures tour and it's, you're almost like homeless, right? Yeah, Some yeah. people, yeah, because like if, unless you have wealthy parents, you know, yeah, that can exactly. support you or, or, you know, some sponsor, meaning like usually private fund, like no company yeah, 
are into paying that soon, you know. So no. usually, like exactly. you, and, you have to be very lucky. Yeah, I think with a lot of things, it's one of those that like, oh well, it's kind of always been that way, and it works for the guys at the top. So I'm lucky for the rest, kind of thing, yeah. you know. Which so it would be nice to see a little bit of change, just because it's always been a certain way doesn't mean that it can't yeah. change a little bit. Um, so that would be nice. And then yeah, like, just going back to sort of the way. Also, I think then the. Uh, the relationship between the stringers and the players can get better because you know sometimes you know stringers get annoyed at coaches or players or sometimes in my opinion personally I think they have a little bit too much respect for players mm. or coaches and they're a lot of the time always scared of oh but what if and they really worry about having to make sure every racket is put at least at the yeah. elite level of stringers yeah, yeah, that yeah. I've worked with they all really really worry about mm. like oh what if we string it on a different machine no it has to be you know like Every, yeah, yeah. Tiny, every tiny detail, detail yeah. is taken care of and yet like we have to work too many hours and you know the conditions can't be that good you know and I don't think that's fair and so I think at some point there needs to be a better balance between the between the two things you know where like as well I mean I for me because I've I guess as well I've worked with or strung for like very very good players and a lot of them are a lot more relaxed than people realize as long as the job is good but you know, sometimes people put too much emphasis, too much like yeah. stress, and that I think is not an efficient way of you know of operating. You know, so it's like always having to wait. What if something happens? What if uh, this happens? What if we have to use this machine? What if and like it doesn't like if things work out usually? Things right? always work out. You know, and so nine times out of ten, people players are accommodating, and as long as the service is good, they're fine with it. You know, yeah. like uh, so. I would like to see stringers have a bit more confidence to like just to behave let's say a little bit sort of with a little bit more courage or a little bit more self-respect in terms of of what they need to do or how they need to work and stuff and not be so worried about you know what a player might think what they might do what if what if yeah. you know so just to be you know to they can give a better cleaner service no but i think you make a really good point and i think that's generally what i felt with all the the stringers it's like they everybody is so keen on putting in a good job uh making the tournament a success making players happy mm -hmm. that you know they feel a lot of stress about it and if the conditions are not good it, it's not a really healthy way to approach no. it like it's not a really healthy situation to be in you no, know because exactly. the players can some players are super nice i mean you've strung for you string for novak regularly mm -hmm. when he's here yep. and stuff and he seems quite relaxed about it yeah, despite yeah. how how fantastic he is on the tennis court and and serious with everything around it yeah uh, but then obviously they're not, not all players are super nice and relaxed. Some players are no. used taking their stress out on the exactly. string team, right? Exactly. And so, for example, uh, yeah, as, as Novak is an example, he's, you know, he knows what he wants. He asked for it politely, grateful. And again, the times that I don't know, I've not been able to do something, I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I, I can make it this time, or I can't, couldn't quite do it. All right, no problem. You know, like it's not the end of the world at the no, end no, of the day, you know, because some the, perspective, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and um, I think that it's important that this, yeah, just the conditions get better because, mm. you know, having to arrive, obviously the stringers are the first, basically the first people to arrive and the last people to leave. You know, most tournaments, we, we get there before the tournament directors arrived, before a lot of the, you know, any setup has arrived. Mm. And we have to always wait until players have left. Um, and so the days are long, but at the same time, we also don't really get any free time because what if on court racket comes? What if this comes? Mm, you know, so you need to be on like standby. Yeah, right? standby constantly, which is again something that I think could change, but it would take a lot of courage from stringers and a setup that would be like, hey, look, you're working sh kind of like a shift turn because now the level of stringing generally has improved so much. So the mm. level of stringing at all these are like high level tournaments is so so good you yeah. know so in general the level of string is much much higher than it was 10 years ago like yeah. it's yeah it's like, really like very, with very everything very i mean tennis increased like level of tennis level yeah. of string level of uh, equipment generally are also exactly. produced you know so yeah, yeah and so now there is also a let's say a generalized um sort of way of stringing and the use of we use the um ERT the DT machine so yeah. um, even the players know that one exactly mm -hmm. the players use it as well and we use that to measure the dynamic tension of the racket so for example say we need to do we need to split rackets for whatever reason because we're busy or the players on court or starting very soon so we do two rackets the same on different machines for the same player and then after we use the DT machine and as long as the DT is uh, within one point then it's not a All problem good, because yeah. then we know that the, the result is the same. And I think with that and using that a little bit more, would we'd be able to put stringers into let's, more of like a shift mm. setup, you know? So, okay, you're taking the morning shift from eight to uh, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, two, sense, yeah. and then you can come back later or whatever it might be. 
and then even if you know maybe I'm there in the morning and you string my players in the afternoon but I know that this the end result is going to be the same yeah because it only will to only take one racket you know to do two rackets the same and then figure out if there's a difference generally in your stringing because if you're a good stringer you're going to string the same all, all the time yeah. if I'm a good stringer we're going to string the same all the time so therefore if you are doing it well, then it's not going to be a problem. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Yeah, there's not lots more love for the stringers and the, like the, some reform in the stringing world. I think. Yes, I think so. I think so. I th yeah, so it would be nice to start to see some changes, to see, you know, a little bit more like um, uh, just, you know, yeah, some different, like some changes because, yeah. you know, things don't have to always be the same just because that's how they were. So it's, it's one of the things that I'm sort of more passionate about than like tournament stringing, just tournament yeah, stringing. Good, so good. that's we, why we need, need people who are taking the bit, the more like political fight in a way or like saying, hey, we, this we could improve, right? Like yeah, exactly. A, for everyone, you know, like it's not just for ITF. one side either. It's going to be better for the tournament, stringers, players, everyone. Yeah. Um, but it just takes a little bit of a push or something to happen that, um, I mean, one of the things I would like to kind of see happen, but I don't think ever will and hopefully shouldn't need to happen, but like, just a, like a stringer strike yeah. at some point, you know, like stringers say, uh, some tournament, could, could happen. Uh, could okay, happen, um, you know, and then the people, like, I hope it wouldn't need to get to that point, but mm. it, like with many things, people are very stubborn, they don't want to change, and so it might be one of the only eventual solutions to like seeing to like the impact the that yeah. stringers have, because mm. uh, then suddenly there's going to be... It's a lot of pro stringers around in the hotel yeah, rooms. Yeah, exactly, you know, things are going to be, you know, it's going to be a chaos and, and hopefully wouldn't need to ever get to that, that would be ideal, but I can see that, you know, I just think that stringers, that for at least the old school generation, are, you know, a little bit more work horsey, so they yeah. are happy to lenient, be... Yeah be there for hours and hours and do what needs to be done, which is great because that's why they're great, great stringers. But at the same time, things can get better. You know, things need to improve, whether it's working conditions, everything, just not, not only in stringing, but in life in general, things hopefully should progress getting better. And uh, I think stringing is the same. So it will be yeah, something that will be nice to see. Good points from Nicky here. And uh, he talks among, uh, I think, for a lot of stringers. So that's nice. And if you agree or if you're a stringer, let us know in the comments. Yeah. And uh, now I have to go and play some tennis, which uh, is uh, fun. Enjoy, I won't be watching. No, it's not <laughs> worth watching. Uh, but we'll do more of these conversations if you like them and uh, talk about other things, rackets, painting and stuff. Yep. And if you want your rackets painted, unstrongcustoms.com, uh, yep. I guess, is the place to go. Yep. As always, I'm looking forward to the comment section. Yes, <laughs> the comments are the most fun. Take care, guys. Don't forget to play some tennis.